good evening uh, vinaya ma'am miss vinaya and uh, soumya miss soumya yes sir yes, sir good evening sir good evening good am evening. i audible are you ready yes are you ready yes sir yes sir miss soumya yes sir i'm completely ready good evening good evening, good evening arun mohan yes, let's sir. start all right sir so uh, welcome you all to the 171st web training series of our bharat sahodaya now it's time for uh, to invite the ai to introduce the moderator of the day so let's not waste a bit let's turn the ai on A very good evening to all the enthusiastic exuberant educators once again. I, the entity invites all of you to be tag in its 171st web training series that attempts to examine the current methods of teaching science in schools and provide alternative, innovative approaches for teaching science. The innovative methods that will be listed out in the session are interesting and involve active participation of the students in the process of understanding science. Hey Red Queen, please handle the rest. I wish all the enthusiastic and exuberant educators a grand evening. I'm the Red Queen, an advanced AI program to protect humanity all around the world. For now I'm here to introduce our moderator of the day, Miss Sormia Johnson. Miss Sormia has completed her master's in commerce from Maharaja Sayajira University Baroda, Gujarat. She did her bachelor's in education from Navratna University Baroda. She started her career in 2014 with the Oxford School, Dubai, followed by the Indian High School Dubai till 2020. Currently she is working with Rosedale Residential School Pathanamphitta as a PGT Economics and as an activity coordinator. She has participated in Gannett Sargent Instructional Design and Teaching Aid Competition organized by Kellogg's Institute of Education and was awarded for the best digital plan in commerce in 2014. Miss Sonia has also participated and recognized at the theatrical performance at Vibrant Gujarat Summit, Gandhinagar, January 2014. Ma'am, it is our esteemed pleasure to have you as our moderator of this enriching session. So I call dearly invite you to take over this grand session. So ma'am, ma warm welcome. Yes. Thank you so us. much Arun sir that was really soothing to my ears. Am I audible sir? Yes ma'am totally. Okay. So shall we start sir? Yes ma'am yes. Totally. Okay. So once again thank you so much Arun sir that was really kind of you uh, your creation week after week inspires us to learn this special skill good evening dear teachers good dear educators welcome to the 171 session that is being conducted today by btag in collaboration with cbse bharat sahodaya i would like to convey my sincere gratitude to the director dr abdul salam and btag for giving me this splendid opportunity i also extend a very warm welcome to all the participants it is indeed a pleasure to have each one of you as an integral part of the webinar as we embark together on this fruitful journey of discussion on the scientific temperament innovative techniques of teaching and learning science available for us in our classes for making the classes more interactive and productive We teachers love to learn so that we are more effective in the class. We use different activities or tools to get the attention of our students. Today we have our resource person Ms Vinaya Kumaran a postgraduate teacher at Chinmaya Vidyalaya Kannur amongst us who will open the gates to many innovative ways of teaching and learning science. To enjoy explore and learn from our resource person this evening we request the participants to keep the camera on and mics on mute please keep posting your questions in the chat box and they will be answered during the question and answer session to have an interactive experience you may dispel your doubts by asking questions kindly 
virtually. Raise your hand and wait for your name to be called out for asking your query. The participants will have the opportunity to receive the certificate only after filling up the certificate form and the feedback form. A gentle reminder, the attendance and certificate link will be posted towards the end of the session. So requesting each one of you to relax and relish the session. I feel really grateful to get an opportunity to greet our leader, inspiration, and most importantly, the pillar of this learning platform, Dr. Abdul Salam, for empowering us with such enlightening sessions week after week. On behalf of this August gathering, let's welcome Dr. Abdul Salam, who is the CBSE resource person, master trainer, and CBSE deputy training coordinator of the Trivandrum region. Sir is the principal of Vibgyar High, Bangalore, the founder of BTAC, that is Bharat Transformers Academic Group, a syndicate of educators and the teaching fraternity across the globe, connecting them to empower the nation. Sir, it is indeed our pleasure to have our gracious presence and I would request you to take over and deliver the welcome note. Abdul Salam, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Soumya. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, welcome on board this 171st uh, web training series. Thank you. Country and uh, from abroad. We have been traveling with us for long, and uh, I could understand that, you know. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Miss uh, Soumya, am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. You are audible, sir. Uh, well, uh, Today, yes, yes, yes. Uh, today, we are very happy to introduce uh, two enthusiastic uh, educators who have been following BTAG and Bharat Sukhodaya in all our sessions and uh, show has and have shown great interest in sharing their expertise, their experience, their knowledge with us. Uh, Ms. Vinaya and uh, Ms. Soumya Johnson and uh, we, on behalf of all the participants who have joined, we extend uh, all the very best to both of them. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Vinaya, ma'am, for uh, coming up with uh, this topic and uh, you, uh, sharing your uh, knowledge uh, to the educators for their benefit. Uh, dear educators, Ms. Vinaya has uh, a good number of you know techniques to share with you. Let's uh, lend our ears to her and uh, enrich our knowledge and uh, we can implement them in the classroom. Thank you so much, everybody. Avinia, ma'am, all the very best to you. Uh, Thank or to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, now let's move on to the main event of today's gathering. We have Ms. Vinaya Kumaran, postgraduate in chemistry, specialized in natural products from University of Calicut. She has done her bachelor's in education in physical science from Kannur University and is set qualified. She is an active member of Royal Science, Royal Society of Chemistry. Ma'am has an experience of 23 years as an educator. She firmly believes that a science teacher should all also evolve with time. And in the due course, she has tried to attune herself into new trends in teaching learning process. She loves to involve children in teaching the concept in a lucid manner. Learning can be made enjoyable by connecting with the learner. Teaching with passion will make remarkable changes in the lives of the learner. With the passion for both technology and education, she has dedicated her 23 years of a professional life to the field of education, constantly striving to make a positive impact in her students' life. She aims to inspire and empower her students to embrace challenges, embrace technology, and become lifelong learners. Let us open our hearts and mind to learn new methods of teaching and learning to make our lessons much better from our resource person for the day, that is Miss Vinaya Kumaran. 
Ma'am, on behalf of everyone present here, I would like to welcome you and request you to take over the proceedings for the evening. Let us all take advantage of this special opportunity that we have got from BTAC to grow and learn together. Over to you, Vinaya, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm very thankful to Dr. Abdul Kalam, sir, to give uh, to get training from him, and uh, I am uh, delighted that I am chosen to be a VTAC trainer here. And uh, I, I like to uh, just uh, impart whatever feel, uh, whatever experiences I have uh, along the, my journey of uh, teaching to uh, to be present to present that before you people. Thank you. Shall I start sharing, sir? Yes, ma'am, you can. Is the PPT visible, ma'am? It is visible, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Welcome, dear educators. Today, my topic is science temperament. Yeah, scientific temperament. So, uh, what are the innovative ways of teaching science? So, here in the slide itself, you can understand that it is very much important that the students will uh, have a good uh, approach towards science, only then they can move forward. So then uh, in, in the Constitution of India, the fundamental rights itself, it is mentioned that scientific temper has to be developed. So then, uh, what are the ways in which we uh, empower the children to um, uh, get the scientific temper? So first of all, what do you mean by the scientific temper? It is nothing but a way of thinking logically and rationally. So then I'll start my presentation. Every child is born with an innate quality, that is inquiry. So according to Professor Manish Jain, we need to preserve the gleams in the eyes of in a, a, in a, a innocent minds. So who's this uh, Professor Manish Jain? You may be knowing that the, he is the fame of STEM 3030. He also says that the, we should reach the child before we teach. So the definition for scientific thinking. So here you find that scientific temper is a way of thinking logically and rationally. It is a way of thinking with an open mind. We should be able to take in all the new facts new experiments, new way of thinking. So we should be always evolving just like science. Now I want my teachers just to observe the uh, lines that are given here. So, and please follow the instructions. Here I have drawn three lines. Can you tell me which is the longest line here? You can use the chat box, the educators. The answers are coming up, ma'am. Many of them are saying one, the middle one, and the last one. Anyone who has written, uh, it is of equal length. Some are saying it's all same. Some are saying both, first one. Yeah. 
Uh, all are equal. All, almost all of them are equal. How do you come to the conclusion? See, you have to avoid the uh, double-headed arrow there. Yes, so the length is the same. How come that the length is the same? How do you come to that conclusion? We find that, first of all, we observe the figure. After observing, we just analyze it, test it, whether it is of this equal length. For that, we do the measurement. All these things happen within our mind. And that is nothing but scientific thinking. So what is scientific thinking? So when you see a problem, first of all, you will just find out what is the thing that is there. Observe it keenly. Keen observation is the most important thing. After that, comes the testing. You are testing whether it is true or false and then validate it, measure it. So all these processes has happened and then you come to the conclusion that all the lines are equal. I hope it is clear. Shall I move on to the next uh, slide? Yes, ma'am. So then one more activity that you have to do now. Please take a piece of paper and just jot down nine points there, nine dots. Try to draw four lines without lifting the pen to include all the dots here. Anyone who has got it? I'm waiting. Ma'am, uh, uh, some of the teachers want you to repeat the exercise that you have given. Repeat the question. Yeah, ma ma yeah. The task is you have to just jot down nine points, just like I have drawn here. Okay. So just make a mark there in the paper and using four lines without lifting your pen. Can you include all the dots in a diagram? Only four lines are to be used. Teachers are getting it, ma'am. Veenda, yeah. ma'am, has got it. So, you know, ma'am has got it. Yeah. You can just see that the answer would be like this. Even if you try from uh, the diagonal part, or from one end, you find that there will be total lines. Now, what is special about this diagram? Can you just make out and tell me? Please note down in the chat box. Uh, Vinita ma'am is saying it looks like a kite. One teacher yeah. is saying like it looks like an arrow. Out of the box question. It is out of the box question. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. So it is out of the box question. You can see here, I have given only nine dots in a cube, right? So in a square, I have given that. Then uh, I have asked you to just use four lines. So then we, we have just extended the line, the side and the other side. Only then we can include all the nine points. So same is the case with science teaching. We have to create certain experiences which are out of the box. That means textual knowledge transfer is not the only thing that you can do. You have to think beyond for which we will have to uh, just exert ourselves a little more so that we can give more to the children. We know that science nowadays, science students are becoming less. So many are going only for the technology part. So they just see science as just to get a pass mark or a percentage. They are never interested in the subject. So how to create interest in the subject? That can be done only if the teachers are well equipped. 
for which we will have to think out of the box and create questions like that. So when we are checking the uh, analysis of India's position, you find that uh, in the research field, there are a lot of advancement in the research field when we take the uh, analytic ratio starting from 2000 to 2019. And in 2020, again, it has increased. So this is the database that is available from Scopus, then uh, Web of Science and Dimensions. So here you, you can clearly see that the uh, graph is progressing. That means we are advancing towards science, but only in the research field. So how come that uh, this uh, uh, method can be just implemented in the school level also? So we know that uh, in the PISA test, we have considerably come very, very low in the uh, Rank, rank list, we are coming at the last position. That is why CBSC and uh, the NEP is implemented now. So you find that NEP is giving, giving much importance to experiential learning for which we will have to provide quality uh, experiences. So coming to the next slide. So the science teacher, must be the pivot of change. Can you just see the slide here? Something is given here when you are just checking this with chemistry. Can you relate it to chemistry? Yes, ma'am, anyone? Teachers are saying elements. Symbols. Yeah, it is the SE. I have just uh, made the code. formula. Yeah, I have made the science teaching or science teacher word into the, the uh, elements, different types of elements. So here you find that E is not a letter that is included in this um, elements list. So then you find that the science teaching can be done like this. We can start the lesson like this. That is one method, right? So when we start a topic, so I, since I am a chemistry teacher, I start the topic like this in 11th and 12th. So the, the children get engaged. So if you are just taking a topic, ask them to write relevant points from that. So then children get engaged. So for, from science, what all elements are there that can be noted down? So this is one method. So, so science teacher is the one who can keep the curiosity in children intact. And curiosity leads to inquiry and innovation. So innovation is a must so that science gets advanced. So science teacher, she is the one who can unleash her potential to the maximum. So according to Albert Einstein, education is not teaching of facts. It is the training of the mind to think. So teacher is a pivot of change. You can get Another word from here. Can you tell me which it is? She can be considered as an archer. So archer who can uh, facilitate the children to just target the bull's eye. So in olden days, you find that experiential learning was emphasized in curricula system. But now that the new generation, they, they are having plenty of technology in hand. So they don't think. So then 
you find that the technological advancement is there in the children, but they don't have any experiences. Due to lack of experiences, they are unable to understand the basics of science. So by giving them plenty of quality experiences, we can just move them forward or you take them to another level of science learning. So how to start the class? So what are the different techniques adapted? So first thing, start the class with a refreshing note. So you know that only a refreshed mind can take in what is being taught. So first of all, ask them to calm down. Let them do pranayama. Let them do a, a deep breathing. Let them do two or three times so that they will be recharged. So just like how we refresh the computers, we can refresh their minds by giving in plenty of oxygen. Tell them the advantage that by uh, inhaling plenty of oxygen, they, their mind gets refreshed, so their brain cells get activated. That is one method So to start the class. Another one is brainstorm. So these are the techniques which I feel may bring a change in the study of the subject. So brainstorming, calculated moves, mnemonics, cracking the code, thought-provoking questions, and engaging assignments. The foremost, the science teacher should be able to give many improvised learning aids. So we'll come to it one by one. Brainstorming. When we start a class, we can start it by a reaction. That is the traditional way. So show a demonstration in the beginning. So if it is a chemistry class, you can start with volcanic eruptions. Show color change. Magic can be shown by using phenophthalene, acid, and base. Isn't it? Take a, a white handkerchief. Dip it in um, acid. Yes. The next, you are adding phenophthalene to it. So prayer, prayer itself in the kerchief, we have added phenophthalene powder. If you dip it in acid, no color change occurs. But when you are dipping it in a base, you find that it will turn pink. Tell them that this is the same thing happening when we are doing this, um, what you call, uh, when uh, these anti-corruption people, they just uh, uh, catch the culprit red-handed. What do you mean by red-handed? It is nothing but the person who is uh, considered as the culprit. So then what is happening there? The uh, notes, the currency notes are of the, those who are taking bribes. So the, the currency note will be smeared with this phenophthalene and they will be just dipping that in sodium hydroxide. So that can be uh, related. So that is real life experience. Another one is improvised missiles. So this is the method to learn uh, what you call Newton's third law. Take a balloon, a straw, then to the, the, through the straw, you just insert a string and just ask the children to hold it from two sides. And after blowing the balloon, release the balloon. It will go to the other side. So there is action and reaction. Same thing we can do with crackers, firecrackers. What is happening? So that also can be explained. All these are methods of brainstorming. The children will be eager to know what is happening. So then they get engaged. This is one method of brain, or one or two methods which I have mentioned now, that is brainstorming. Now, if I am teaching this periodic table, as told earlier, 
we can ask the children to find out which are alphabets are missing, which are letters are missing in the, in the periodic table. So that they will just go through that and find out what are the letters that are missing. This is another technique. Simply just teaching the periodic table, anybody can do. So if you give such quality inputs, children will be engaged. Main thing is many of them, when we are giving an assignment, they will go Google it and get the answer. So it's our duty to find out certain questions which are not seen in the Google. So we will have to be resourceful. That should be taken into consideration. Hope it is clear. Shall I move on to the next one? Yes, ma'am. Calculated moves. Here I have taken a small topic. So this is a topic that has taken from the chapter Assets, Bases and Solves in seventh standard. How to convert a base to a salt using two moves? Can anyone tell me? Please use the chat box. Yes, ma'am. Uh, acid added by adding acid, litmus paper. These are the answers, ma'am. By adding acid, base, neutralization. Base, when react, see here, uh, base, dash, dash, salt. This is the thing that's given to the children. Ask them to fill it up. So one way is they will directly write base plus acid giving salt. Right. So this is one technique where they are using their science knowledge. Another child may write B-A-L-E, bale. That is another word. Then sail, S-A-L-E. Then comes salt. So that is also an innovative answer, even though it's not related to science. So likewise, we can create another type of question. See now, nowadays we are focusing on competency-based questions. So how to create competency-based questions by giving certain uh, activities which are out of the box, we can create that. So one method is like this. Use of mnemonics. This is a very good technique to learn science. So learning can be made simple. Many things you have learned right from your school days. One example is oil rig. So what is oil rig? You know that here oil stands for oxidation of loss of oxidation is loss of electrons reduction is gain of electrons so if you uh, just remember the mnemonics the whole thing will be remembered then reactivity series this actually has been made by my children a few years back it's very difficult to remember the reactivity series as it is. And the, uh, at times, we require the reactivity series in order to check whether a chemical reaction is possible or not. Right. So then, how to learn this? It is just a simple sentence. It doesn't have any logic. It doesn't have any meaning. But it can be remembered forever. So it is nothing but start from potassium, ka, na, ka, magal, zareen, faced a problem in his house, cut, huge, Argentina went to Australia to play PT. 
hope it is understandable children will find it humorous they will remember it for long should i repeat ka na ka magal zari faced a problem in his house cut huge arjuna went to australia to play pt likewise you can make uh, many mnemonics uh, in different languages so that children can have a better understanding they can remember it for a long time you might have learned about b b roy of great britain in physics isn't it so that we learned long back when in during our school days still we remember that so same thing can be applied here so mnemonics is yet another method of learning science very easily so this can be applied to any subject also it's not only science we can learn it in tune so that it can be remembered so give tune to the uh, mnemonics that also can be done so 3d series this is a very important topic that is of d block uh, coming in 12th standard so we are supposed to learn the 3d series in the proper manner starting from 21 atomic number 21 to 30 that is sc scandium titanium vanadium chromium manganese iron cobalt nickel copper zinc it's very difficult to remember that in this man so the code word is here science teaching very crucial man fico nico zen so this is yet another technique to remember that science teaching very crucial man fico nico zen the whole thing is remembered it starts from 21 to 30 Shall I move on to the next one? Yes, ma'am. Now, art of question. Uh, ma'am, uh, uh, teacher Hello. Rani Agarwal wants you to repeat uh, the last slide. There were previous, two uh, more, uh, previous okay. slide. There were two yeah. more teachers who were asking the same. Yes, uh, first one or the second one? the third series ma'am third series 3d series yes. science teaching very crucial man science teaching very crucial man fico nico zen that is from the letters itself fico nico zen right shall i move on yes ma'am art of question so likewise the whole periodic table you can make code words you can ask the children to do they will do better than us use of riddles puzzles and brain teasers medley gridding and cracking the code first one puzzles riddles all this come in this variety i have given a small example for the uh, class 6 all living things need me i help in burning who am i class 6 chapter air children will think they will give the answer isn't it likewise we can create plenty of riddles and puzzles medley give a situation just uh, just like how we are uh, following the case based questions instead of giving the questions directly from the different uh, guides and other uh, reference material you can go for your own material yes develop that so a child mixes some sand iron nails black pepper and salt think of the st steps to separate them and mention the processes involved the chapter is 
separation of substances class 6 isn't it a good way instead of asking how will you separate give a situation give a story a narration and then continue with the steps shall i move on yes ma'am gridding crosswords many may be doing that sodoku in science is possible relate sodoku with elements relate it with numbers okay you can correlate science with mathematics science maths is also a form of science so it can be interlinked are you this is one way of giving the grid yes after teaching chemical reactions whether this is possible or not ask them to complete you can go for science also this um, biology also you you are doing that in uh, this uh, what you call genetics isn't it so they saying can be applied when we are giving some other um, narrators on one side and the other side also give that and that is another technique cracking the code this is one method which i love personally now it is the world of coding isn't it so then cracking the code is yet another method of engaging the children use the letter code to spell a unique process in chemistry but remember to use only the letters with prime numbers to be used okay the codes are given there you can give the code ask them to find out which is the process involved yes children will be relating it to prime numbers so unknowingly we are linking the subject interlinking is also important in the new method of teaching isn't it can you tell me what will be the answer it's difficult because we have written the uh, all the uh, letters in the alphabet so then we will have to take time so the uh, it is actually sublimation yes iodine yes that is answer shall i move on yes this is another technique which we can make the children do and they will be involved thoroughly because all of them like to decode now the next type is framing thought provoking questions correlating learning with the environment example i want teachers to just answer this put it in the chat box soumya ma'am can yes, you ma help me out definitely ma'am yeah should i read it out a villager went to the ration shop to buy kerosene while returning home he realized that the can containing kerosene was leaking he was passing by the river side can you suggest a way to take the entire quantity of kerosene without spillage we have a uh, smita vino teacher saying fill it with water yeah very good can i love it some water in the he can take some water in kerosene oil with float fill yeah. it with water 
Oh. Have teachers answering this, ma'am? Yes, this is related to density. Isn't it a competency based question? Children will love to answer that, isn't it? So we find that water is denser, so it will be underneath. So by the time he walks to home, he, he will find that the kerosene is remaining there. Yeah. Shall I move on? Yes, ma'am. Please identify the picture in the slide. This is also. It's a submarine. A Teachers are typing, ma'am. It's a submarine. Yeah. It was recently in the news. Or Ocean Gate submarine, one of the teachers. Yeah, correct. So it is the Titan submarine Titan. which yes, collapsed. Yes. Okay. This can be related to the topic. Give the probable reason for the fate of Titan submarine in the light of any law learned by you. What do you understand by implosion? Explosion, everybody have heard. What is implosion? Such questions can be asked. You can relate it to Boyle's law, isn't it? We have teachers typing, ma'am, pressure difference. Yes, Blocking pressure difference. Inverse. The design of the um, that vehicle, the submarine design was like that. Then it was locked from outside, so they didn't have a chance to just escape out. Then deep underneath, pressure is very high, so that will change the temperature, and that might have the cause of this implosion. So it is bursting within. Shall I move on to the next one? This is actually a question that is taken from the sample paper of 12th standard in chemistry last years. Which fluid is used for de-icing of window screens of cold countries? Window screens of cars in cold countries, formaldehyde, phenol, propantuol, and acetic acid. So each time when you give such questions, you can just relate to what is this formaldehyde, what is this phenol, whether it will react or is it a reactive material, then uh, propantuol, what is this propantuol, is it same as isopropanol, so this is actually the IUPAC name, right? So you find that this propantuol can be related to this uh, what you call the sanitizers, sanitizers. Nowadays, we are using what are the constituents of sanitizers. All these can be made into a question. Acetic acid, whether it can be used. Acetic acid also can wipe out the uh, ice on the screens. But is it a, a good option? Acetic acid can react with uh, the substances that are present. So we never use that as windscreen um, de-icing substance, okay? So the answer is propan to oil. It is isopropyl alcohol. Shall I move on to the next one? Formaldehyde, when you are uh, speaking of formaldehyde, you can uh, take the instances of uh, how the fish and other um, substances are kept intact for long nowadays how it gets spoiled and how it becomes cancerous if you are uh, eating such things, okay? Phenol also, you know, that's it's a highly um, carcinogenic. No. Yes. What do you see in the picture here? You have Salted mango, gooseberries, and lemon. Okay.
This is a question taken from the textbook of 12th standard. When tender mango is pickled, it shrinks. But the same when done with gooseberry, the size remains the same. So the part of it I have taken from the textbook. And I have added gooseberry is having the same size. Why it is so? The salted gooseberry, this, uh, when it is pickled, you find that the size remains the same even if it is kept for long hours, a long, a long time. Give an ample example for the same. Why it's not seen in the case of lemon? So it is related to osmosis. Can you tell me what is the answer? Hello? Yes, ma'am. They are uh, teachers are typing osmosis. Yes. Preserving methods. Yes, ma'am. It is all it is already high concentration. Amount of salt content is same. Yes, amount of salt is more here. We have pickled it. So you find that the raw mango it shrinks, isn't it? So it is shrinking. Whereas in the case of gooseberry, it's not shrinking. It is also put in brine solution. Why it is not shrinking? Could you relate it to some other subject? Transfer of liquid through a semi-permeable membrane. Yes, that is osmosis. See here, you find that this mango, it is fleshy. It is containing a lot of uh, water content inside. So then you find that uh, the uh, osmosis occurs and you find it is actually exosmosis that is occurring when we are adding this brine solution. So then the size will shrink. So same thing, we are, the same condition is given for this gooseberry also. I know uh, uh, gooseberry means it's amla. So why that the size is not shrinking? Could you relate it to some other subject? What is the shape of that? Shape will give you the clue. See, it's, it is spherical, isn't it? You find that volume of the substance, when it is in the spherical shape, it is to the minimum. Right. So then, even if it is having water content, it is not able to shrink further. So it's already in the smallest possible form. So what happens in the case of lemon? Lemon is having lot of juicy content inside. So it is undergoing osmosis through the semi-permeable membrane. You find that skin of the fruits, even our human skin, it is semi-permeable. So osmosis can happen. That is why we are sweating. Right? Shall I move on to the next one? So this can be related to biology. This can be related to mathematics. This can be related to chemistry. Shall I move on to the next one? Sure, ma'am. This is yet another topic that is taken from the news. What could be the probable reason for the fire accident that happened in the warehouse which stored bleaching powder? So this happened in Kerala a few, uh, two months back. Yes? What could be the reason? It's mentioned bleaching powder. Chemical reaction, one of the teacher is talking. Yeah, chemical reaction. It is an exothermic reaction that is happening. And it was told that the bleaching powder had more amount of percentage, ad admissible percentage of chlorine in it. So you find that when chlorine content, uh, that uh, the composition is different, the amount of heat that is liberated will be high. And that might be the reason why it exploded.
coming to thought provoking questions here i have taken uh, a question related to this um, surface tension yes so this is yet another way of teaching this surface tension right so you find that the paper clip will float the stick insect also floats on water it never drowns yes what could be the reason because of surface tension high surface tension holds this light objects on top correct so it is unbalanced forces that are present here we can relate it to surface tension directly from physics you can uh, relate it to surface uh, chemistry in chemistry even though it is deleted portion it can be related correct so then how to improvise this topic here can you see this vessel this is available in kerala households we call it as a kindi right so instead of this those who are not in kerala they can use a vessel with a hole and just hold it like this and whirl it around pour water inside and you can show this as an improvised learning aid you just allow it to turn on its own it will after filling it with water you find that the water will be just sprayed tangentially the same thing you can relate it with the tires why the mud guards are used that is all there in the textbook isn't it so here you find that this can be used to teach this what you call centrifugal forces so i just use this um, improvised aid to just help you out how you can explain what is centrifugal force right so i didn't take water because it may spill on my laptop right shall i move on to the next one surely ma'am yes framing challenging assignments i as told earlier whenever an assignment is given to the children we will have to take care that nothing is copied yeah so then we have to just exert ourselves in preparing such questions one way to explain organic chemistry after writing or after teaching this iupsc system of hydrocarbons you can ask the children to write all the letters in english alphabets using iupsc name yeah a iupsc name 1 2 dimethyl cyclopropane it becomes interesting they won't get it from the net shall i move on so what are the strategies to make the concept clear science teachers should keep on asking questions why why this happens why it's not happening so ask them to think like that so when they are seeing a seeing or observing a reaction or observing a phenomenon ask them to just find out what is the reason behind that so if they think on their own they will come to conclusions so from that they can get more insights so the concept can be made clear incorporate the latest knowledge into the content newton's third law how can it be related to chandrayaan's launch how can it be related to firecrackers you can uh, quote trishur puram how that the fireworks are happening when it is uh, sent from uh, the ground why it is popping up and just exploding uh, on top or on the sky so that and all can be explained cleared
Strategy is to make the concepts clear. Try out making interactive notebooks. So that is one method to make the concepts clear. Children will love to do it. So this is applicable for lower classes. Even the higher classes, we can ask them to doodle. Interactive placards. So learning by doing makes the concept clear. Learning the formula of ionic compounds. You can ask them to make such placards, small flashcards. When they are joined together, if it is joining in the proper manner, it could be a compound. Otherwise, it won't be a stable compound. Try making out interactive periodic table. I hope if this is visible, this is one interactive table today I made. Yes. So here you find that I have taken the printout of this periodic table, colored it, and then I can write the concepts behind that and just make them revise. So this is S block. S block. It mainly consists of metals. What is the general electronic configuration? What are the properties of these elements? Everything can be noted down in gist. Hope it is understood. This way you can make them do a project. It can be an activity and that will make the learning easier. Now teachers are asking like periodic table should be made in which class? Actually, uh, in 10th standard, it's a deleted portion now. So then it comes in 11th standard now. But you can give a outline of the elements in sixth, seventh or uh, sixth or seventh standard. Only then they will have an idea about this chemistry. So the next one, correlating with the environment. Here we have the chapter called matter and in the surroundings. We also have the chapter called solutions colligative properties in class 12. All these are related. So you find that 9th standard portion, 11th standard portion, it is actually coming uh, almost uh, coming as a um, continuation. Likewise, 8th uh, standard, then 10th standard, then 12th standard. Some uh, chapters will be having a link. So, in uh, matter and uh, matter and its surroundings, we can uh, talk of what is boiling. See, nowadays the children rarely get the chance to do the experiments. So, they, especially now, uh, since they have uh, missed out their academic class uh, academics uh, through this corona, you find that some of them are not even aware of how the water boils. Isn't it? They have been sitting in front of the uh, laptop and learning. So then experiences are to be given. So ask them to prepare tea or coffee. Ask them to boil water and see what happens. So this can be done from home itself. So we ask them to find out uh, at what time the bubbles arise before adding the salt after adding the salt, whether there is a change in the timings that, that is uh, taken for the substance to boil. So that things can be learned. This can be related to elevation in boiling point, depression in freezing point in 12th standard. And uh, so you can give ample exp uh, explanation for that. Uh, take the case of Maggie. How to prepare Maggi, whether, whether Maggi, uh, the preparation of the noodles can be done uh, without adding uh, the uh, salt at the beginning and uh, we'll see what happens if we are cooking 
by adding salt uh, uh, at the last stage. So in which case uh, does it uh, cook faster? That can be understood. So from that, they can understand elevation in boiling point related to pressure cooker. What is the working of a pressure cooker? Chil children are confused with what, how the pressure cooker works. Even the 12th standard students, they are not clear of the concept. So under pressure, you find the boiling point is found to increase. When the, in the enclosure, when boiling point increases, the substance is cooking at a faster rate. That is how the pressure cooker works. That can be made clear. Then why salt is added to water while preparing boiled egg? This is another question again related to what? Elevation in boiling point. Shall I move on to the next one? Sure, ma'am. Use of fat. See, it's very, very easy to understand the concept of PSEPR. Then the many concepts in physics can be understood far better than explanation in the classes using this FET simulations. Okay, then use of JMOL, that's a software in chemistry. Uh, many of you may be using that. So to visualize the molecules, it's better to use the simulations. Here, this is a methane molecule. So just like how we are using ball and stick uh, model, for teaching the concepts of uh, structure of atoms, um, structure of molecules, we can use the simulations for the purpose because many, many schools are now having interactive panels. Then this is the structure of beta protein, okay? So protein structure, this is beta pleated structure of protein. So this is created using JMOL application. Now we start with the improvised teaching aids. So use of brass vessels, I have already shown that how to teach the centrifugal forces, yes? So instead of using this, you needn't use br brass vessel itself. You can take a small bottle, a plastic bottle can be taken, make a small hole in that and just uh, hang it or, uh, with a thread or with a rope and then pour water in that and just uh, make it tight, then leave it. So then the way in which the water is spilled out, it will be tangential. So uh, from that, you can teach what is centrifugal forces, what are centripetal forces, how are they really related, all these can be taught. Even a piece of paper can become an inexpensive teaching aid. Right, so while teaching this uh, concept called proteins, proteins are having different type of structures. So a piece of paper, you just have to take a piece of paper, roll it. So make them understand that this represents a polypeptide chain. This polypeptide chain, when it is folded in a regular manner, you are just curling it around, okay? Just like a slingy or just like an elongated spring. You find that this becomes the alpha structure, alpha helix structure. This is the secondary structure of protein. Then when there are two types of this one, 
when it uh, two such strands when they join together they will form the globular structure right so this globular structure is uh, the structure of globulins or albumins that is the tertiary structure likewise you take two pieces and just make it into a uh, ball that becomes the tertiary structure so even an inexpensive piece of paper can become a teaching aid so various activities in science mechanisms in organic chemistry can be taught using flow charts then use of painting i uh, i couldn't make it because uh, um, because of uh, lack of time use of painting or drawing on t-shirts or aprons to teach allocation of different organ organs and its functions so in biology you can teach the different systems by drawing the sketch onto an apron the teacher can wear it the exact location of the different organs can be understood from that same thing is in, if you just uh, stitch many type of systems onto the same apron after teaching one you just fold it the next one can be taken in so that is yet another method of explaining the different uh, systems in uh, zoology right children will be interested they know where the different organs are located and the functions also that can be done with the help of a role play persistence of vision this you can do it with the help of a flip book ask them to make a flip book that will be helping them out to learn persistence of vision many of them are doing that many teachers may be helping out their children out through these activities more than that if you have you can please share also now periodic table and classical uh, music how can it be related children who know carnatic music ask them to sing how the periodicity is there in carnatic music the same way we find that there is a periodicity in the properties of different elements the trends can be taught by explaining this in simple sentences using uh, rhyming words okay so then it becomes very very easy yet another method instead of using this interactive periodic table in the form of a, a table itself you can roll it and make it into a cylinder and just uh, increase the radius so that we can find out different uh, families coming together those which are having the same property that can be explained in a better way now coming to how the children learn so that is learning code see we know that children are of four main types one is auditory then visual then kinesthetic and tact tactile right so you find that the lecture method reading method then audio visual method all these are just helping out the children who are just auditory and the retention power of that will be very very less you can see there it's written 5% 10% 20% so if you are teaching a concept just by lecture method it only 5% of 
that will be retained and we know that there is a forgetting curve so when when a teacher teaches a concept through lecture method if the child is not revising the same the same day the whole thing will be lost when it is gradually uh, when it is taken up only towards the eve of the examination so then children have to uh, learn by teaching themselves so if they teach them uh, teach a concept to others in a simple way it is easier for them to retain it better it becomes concrete so that is told by what is this learning code so we have different methods with different strategies of retaining the memory the retention is maximum when we teach a person uh, with the concepts it becomes concrete so here we have the bloom's taxonomy also yeah when you are just checking the taxonomy you find that remembering understanding all this comes towards the Uh, peripheral part and it becomes very very passive so the learning becomes passive so the first few methods towards the apex of this pyramid you find that or the triangle you find that it is showing less retention as we move downwards to the base you find that retention becomes more and more so these are some of the strategies that i have just marked it out retrieval practice mind mapping pomodoro technique interleaving then coding the notes then spaced practice blurting technique studying while playing the music then exercising before study the learning happens best when you are resting and there there are two more methods that is known as um, leitner method and segnatic uh, effects so out of these methods the best method is the one which is written at the end you sorry so the one that is written at the end that is fine fine man technique fine man technique is the nothing but teaching others the concept so i told you earlier the uh, method of teaching others or taking class to oneself makes the retention power more so these are the different strategies retrieval method practice it is nothing but revising yes then pomodoro technique that is the method by which we are taking short breaks converting the topic to small chunks and then uh, taking short breaks in between and learning spaced practice again revision revision after a period of time blurting technique learning the concept closing the book writing down the concepts that you have learned then revising again and going through the missing links lightness system it is nothing but flash cards so using flash cards is yet another method of learning so this can be applicable only once the learner knows what is happening okay so whether the child is an early riser or a late night uh, owl that has to be first understood only then they can follow the techniques so these strategies can be made clear in the class so that the children can choose the better method then sigarnik uh, effect this is 
yet another technique where it is a psychological method uh, wherein the children are not learning the concept completely if uh, if it is incomplete uh, learning that's happening what happens is the, re uh, the when they are resting the mind will be keeping on lingering on that so then the learning becomes better than the completed task the next method is mind mapping everyone is aware of it uh, writing the concepts through mind mapping it becomes very clear it is concise and last revision can be done by doing this method then interleaving so different topics can be learned in between so that is the method so suppose a child is doing some maths problems next switch over to a lighter subject again go back to the maths so that is yet another method of retention of the memory study while playing music that depends on the child color coding that also depends on the children okay whether they are comfortable with the colors that should be made uh, clear then exercise before study so recent studies have uh, uh, made clear that after rigorous exercise if you study the retention power is more learning best while you rest ample sleep sound sleep is very well essential for retaining the concept so that is why we unknowingly have been telling the children that on the eve of the exam you should have a sound sleep and the best method that is known as feynman technique so in feynman technique we are asking the children to teach the concept to others so peer teaching is done the concept will be made clear so i am uh, just winding it up some art integrations which i feel is important concepts in organic chemistry and metallurgy can be done by flow charts or concept mapping as a ready reckoner uh, they can uh, do the concept mapping stick it in the study so that the uh, they by seeing this uh, daily by observing it daily it becomes uh, intact in memory preparing dolls using thermocol and pop yes this was actually taught by my teacher when i was doing b ed long back okay so the teacher had uh, told us to prepare dolls out of thermocol yes you can make an army out of it add uh, keep uh, different magnets fill it with pop what is pop plaster of paris and just uh, make the concepts clear when you are bringing the uh, like poles it will move apart so this was made clear by taking the example of rama sita and ravana art integration metals and its properties children can be asked to make a jugalbandi or an orchestra using different sized metallic containers ask them to bang on it pour water in that depending upon the air column the timbre, the frequency of the sound also changes it can be turned into a beautiful music making a piece of jewelry all this i have taken from the cbsc um, art integration concepts preparing cost effective models to uh, teach the working models using cardboards just now i have shown uh, how to explain uh, the ionic bonding yes just a piece of cardboard and colored paper will do other interesting activities 
debates can be done, role plays can be done, talk show, then marble art, rangolis, then uh, what do you call chromatography using felt pen, using sketch pen. It comes wonderfully. So from that, children will know what all pigments are there in each and every sketch pen. Preparing PPT and documentary, then encourage children in publishing science magazines, science club activities, Atal Tinkering Lab. That's all from me. Now we have inter uh, investigatory projects for 12th standard. Endemic species can be uh, asked to make, uh, so you, you can ask them to make this uh, in the form of PPT and then take the printout, okay? Whether it's effective as a medicine, then uh, the comparison between fast food and nutritious desi food, yes, uh, to inculcate healthy food habits. Health education also comes there. Uh, life skill also comes there. This is a project that is taken to compare the cleansing action of shikakai and hibiscus extract compared to that of shampoos and liquid store. So then investigatory projects using soap nuts. I doubt many of you may not be have, having a knowledge of the soap nuts. Uh, in Kerala, we have this uh, tree where you get the soap uh, nuts. When it is boiled, it will produce uh, soapy substance that can be used for cleansing. Yes. So it can be even used to clean the hair, just like shampoo. So investigate on that. Children will do wonderful projects. Then the most important one, which we need to be immediately aware of ginger and turmeric how it helps uh, preserving our health what are the chemical constitution uh, what is the benefit of it using that in curries what is the chemistry behind cooking all this can be dealt with thank you that is from me my side so Sir, that's the end of my slide. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. And you can take questions, ma'am. Yes. Soumya, so ma'am. Yes, yes, sir. I'm ready. Vinay, ma'am, you can uh, close the sharing PPT. Yes, sir. Vinaya, ma'am, we have teachers commenting that uh, the session was extremely well planned and it was truly effective. They have really loved it. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Excellent session. Thank you, ma'am. Great. It was, uh, session was great and wonderful. We have different messages coming up, ma'am, for you. The technique. Oh, no, the, so, well. some of my inputs, if it would be beneficial for others, I would be glad to share that. Exactly. So, uh, because of lack, when, of lack of lack of time, I couldn't uh, uh, accommodate many of the uh, inputs what I have and what I wanted to share uh, because I was uh, asked to just change a little bit or, or about uh, three three days back so then i could uh, manage only this much <laughs> but truly ma'am it was really effective for the it will help the teachers to come up with many different methods and techniques while teaching science in their classes let it be okay. biology or chemistry physics though i am uh, I'm, not, I'm not teacher, that uh, i find I'm it very not good that good that uh, doing biology because I don't have a background of biology. I'm, I'm basically a chemistry teacher chemistry. and uh, can manage only physics to some extent. Okay, okay. But really, so manage. Somehow I have tried uh, explaining osmosis and other things. Okay, ma'am. <laughs> yes, teachers, you can come up with your questions. I will read the comments to Vinaya, ma'am. 
they can raise their hands so if they, there is anyone otherwise we can wind up okay all right i think it was self explanatory uh, so me ma'am you can go ahead with the word of thanks okay sir thank you ma'am it was been it has been such an honor to be a part of this wonderful event i'm running short of words to express my humble thanks to dear vinaya ma'am who very diligently explained us different innovative ways of teaching and learning science an event like this cannot happen overnight the wheels start rolling weeks ago it requires planning and a birds eye for details we have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated colleagues who knew their jobs and are result oriented dear participants kindly note the link for the certificate and feedback form has been already posted you are requested to fill up the form with all the necessary details i samya johnson along with the cbsc Sah bharat sahodaya complex would like to express sincere gratitude to madam vinaya kumaran once again for her gracious presence and an enriching experience on behalf of each one of you i would like to thank dr abdul salam for his rock solid support encouragement and guidance thank you sir for bringing the teaching fraternity together and helping us to add on to our teaching my heartfelt gratitude to you sir and to all the participants who were present today also a big thank you to the technical team and mr arun mohan sir for flawless execution of today's session the most and the most importantly thank you a million times to all the particip participants for their enthusiasm i sincerely hope we earned the privilege of your time dear participants thank you for attending today's event and for sharing your valuable insights and feedbacks we appreciate your contributions and hope that you found the session to be a valuable learning experience your support means a lot to us we want to extend a heartfelt thank you for attending today's session over to you sir thank you uh, thank you everybody i uh, hope uh you have got what you had expected when you joined this session i think uh, vinaya ma'am deserves a huge round of applause thank, thank you. you so much vinaya ma'am yeah, it was actually uh, you know a lot and lot of techniques uh, we could see and uh, it all because of your research and your efforts and uh, we you know Uh, had set uh, a few expectations and i'm very glad that you had met those expectations thank you so much and you, uh, initially yeah initially there were a bit of glitches but uh, your yeah, presentation I, was I do, uh, you know I do, I uh, am... excellent the slides so, were so excellent I, I with uh, lots and it. lots of you know innovative techniques okay sir i i'm not that good at uh, public speaking i have a hints in uh, doing it's that. okay yeah. it's okay but uh, you know everybody has different talents yeah. you have shown your talent in a different way right your okay. slides were self explanatory that you have made it in such a way that you know everybody got enriched by the ways you know ways and means you have presented so okay. thank you so thank much you. Uh, keep going and uh, i can understand uh, I, i can see many more comments and uh, uh, the, they all like the session excellent wonderful thank you so much and uh, that you know that is what you 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 have you can take away as a, you know as an outcome of your uh, preparation your uh, presentation thank you so much vinaya ma'am equally equally thank you uh, saumya ma'am for the great support you have done there was a chemistry working with, between you and vinaya ma'am uh it saumya ma'am it never felt that you are doing it for the first time so thank you so thank much thank you so much sir thank you yeah. so much saumya ma'am i i am very very grateful to you because uh, the timely comments that you gave uh, i couldn't see the chat box thank you very much no that's that was my job ma'am to help you out yeah 
I wanted Thank to do it correctly. That's Abdul it. Kalam sir, I am uh, Abdul Salam sir. I am very very thankful to you that you have given me an opportunity to show my uh, some of the uh, my in, insights to others. I could share. Thank you very much. Uh, really, madam, uh, this is what we want to do. We want to give opportunities to everybody. That is why we you know keep encouraging educators to come up and uh, on this platform i also uh, you know request everybody if you have something to share with us you you are also always welcome you can send send me a message you can call me and uh, there is one miss uh, nishantini with uh, her hand raised uh, miss nishantini you can unmute and you can uh, speak Yes. Uh, good evening, sir, and good evening, good everyone. Evening. Uh, sir, uh, I was not able to open the chat box uh, to fill the form. The chat box is closed because you know the form is posted, the link is posted, and uh, so there will be a lot of messages. So the link will go, you know, hidden. That's why it is closed. I will open it and paste the link once again. Okay, sir. All right, it is done. All right. Thank you so Thank much, you. everybody. Please save this link. This link is uh, a permanent one for all the sessions so that, you know, uh, we don't have to ask for this link every time. This is for all the sessions we have conducted and we will be conducting. So Thank thanks, you. everyone. Uh, one thing you have to take care is while filling, you don't forget to enter the transaction ID with without which many fails, you know, difficulty in getting the certificates. They, they will not be processing the certificates without the transaction ID. There is a column, there is a field to enter. That is very important. Please take care. And also we are sending, dispatching the certificates to your email. Sometimes the emails get back because of the wrong ID and all. Please fill the email ID correctly. And also please keep checking the, your spam folder. Your spam folder might get your, uh, you know, might have your certificate in sometimes because of security reasons, it will end in, it will land in your spam folder. So thank you, Vinaya ma'am. Thank you, Soumya ma'am. Once again, thanks everybody. Uh, keep connected. We are coming with uh, lots of other uh, relevant topics. Uh, uh, we have been working with in order to give you more and more inputs and uh, insights. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night and uh, have a nice Sunday tomorrow. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Thank you, everybody. We are closing here. Okay, sir. Good night. You, sir. Good night.